In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Welcome everyone to St. Mary's Revival. As you know, the theme of the revival is heaven, and every night we talk about one aspect or something related to heaven. So, um, if you're in the Bible study last week, we started talking about, and we had a lot of questions about the glorified body. And I told you next week we'll cover that in detail. And here we are, we're talking tonight about the glorified body. So we welcome Shabelle, who will lead us through that topic. Hi, everyone. Um, as you know, these um, two weeks in August uh, are very special for the church. Um, we spend these two weeks in fasting and prayer um, in honor of the Mother of God, St. Mary. We call her the second heaven. Um, her body was so sacred that when she gave birth to Christ, she remained a virgin, and she was a virgin before and during and after the birth of Christ. Even in um, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 44, and uh, in the Tespaha, in the Pasali to St. Saint, Saint Mary on Sunday, we hear uh, the words that uh, Ezekiel says, I saw a door towards the east. Uh, the Lord God entered through it, and, re- and it remained thoroughly shut as before. Okay? So it was a prophecy as well that her virginity never left, um, never left her, even though she gave birth to Christ. This is why we call her the second heaven. And the church, as Abuna said, has ded- dedicated um, the revival of this theme to, to heaven. Um, and tonight, what, what we're discussing is the state of the body, uh, which we call the glorified body, when it enters heaven. Because it does change state. And it's different to the body that will, I wouldn't say body, the spirit that will enter paradise. Okay, so it, there's a journey which we'll discuss tonight. Okay, so if we're going to live for eternity in this glorified body, we should really start to understand it, right? If, if our forever and ever and ever we're going to live in a particular body, I think we should start to understand what it's going to be like. And the Bible has given us a glimpse of what this body will be like. But to be able to fully understand what this glorified body will be like, we've got to start to understand our body at the moment and what we are. What is man? Okay? And I recommend the book by His Holiness, Pope Shenouda, titled that exactly, What is Man? Okay? And the very first chapter he talks about man is body, soul, and spirit. Okay? So someone asks, man or or human in general, um, is, is, is body, soul, and spirit. So let's talk about these three before we talk about the journey of the body, soul, and the spirit during life and after life and what's going to happen. First, the body. We know that the body was made out of dust. Um, and the body is what we're most familiar with, okay? Um, we can feel the body. We, we can touch the body. Um, we, um, we live in our body. We feed it. We, we clean it. We look after it. And it's what we're most familiar with. We know it's there. We can see it. We, we, we're it, Right? Okay, it's, it's different to the soul and to the spirit, which we can't see, but we can feel. Okay, so we, we, we do give great care to our bodies uh, because we can see and feel it. Okay, but there's a lot of misconceptions about the body. Many people say that the body is evil. Okay, and they say it will return to dust and then this, we should really look after the spirit um, because the spirit is what is going to go to God. Then, of course, a lot of that is right, but, but not all of that, okay? What we sometimes do, and uh, unfortunately, I, I think we, we do this a lot, sometimes in our churches, is we, we put down the body so much, we say the body is evil. The body is not evil. The body isn't evil, and that's important to understand. Um, God created the body, and, the bo- and God doesn't create any evil, Okay? The body is not evil. God created it. Jesus took a body like ours. Could we ever say that his body was evil? Never. Okay? So he, he wouldn't take a body that was evil. Okay? 
um, the body, which we'll come to a bit later, is going to be resurrected. Why would God resurrect a body that's evil? Okay? Let's take examples. The body of the saints. They perform miracles. Even after the spirit has left the body. Okay? How many times have you heard in books or you've heard stories from family or from friends um, when um, someone has gone to a body of a particular saint and they've been healed? Okay? And that's just their body. There's no soul, there's no spirit in there. Okay? Just their body. Okay? Um, And the saints uh, themselves, if we take, for example, Saint Anthony, the devil used to beat him physically almost until he died. At one stage, they, the monks were, found him in the church and they thought he was dead and they were going to pray the, the burial prayers on him because the, the devil beat him up so much physically, hit him physically, that he was almost dead. He was left unconscious, okay? This is St. Anthony, okay? So the body ha- took a, a huge blows for the spiritual life, took blows for God. You can't call that evil, can you? Um, and... The, the spirit pushes the body to do things to get closer to God. For example, the spirit will say, pray. The spirit will say, fast. I'm talking about the, the, the human spirit inside. It, it belongs to God and it's pushing the body saying, fast, pray, get up. I know you're tired. Even the Lord said it to the disciples because the spirit is willing but the flesh is, is weak. Okay, it, he's, It's pushing us. Go a bit further. Go a bit further. Okay? So the body is, is, doing, uh, is suffering for the sake of the kingdom of heaven and for the sake of your own spiritual life. Now imagine on the last day, the, the body is evil and it stays in, it stays in the ground and, and the spirit makes it to heaven and the spirit looks down at the body after everything it did. Imagine the body of St. Anthony that got beaten and, and got hurt and everything it did and the spirit is like, oh, I made it. It was good telling the body what to do and now it's dead. Of course not, okay? So, so, and we'll come a, a bit to that later about um, how the body will participate in this glorified body. Um, also, don't forget that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It was anointed, okay? So we don't call it evil. And if you think, even you might say, like the body was born with the original sin, but after baptism, so say a baby was baptised and it received the Holy Mayrun and it had Holy Communion straight after its baptism, what evil do you find in a baby's body? It has no sin, okay? After all that, okay? Until it finds sin. So what we can say is the body, um, the, 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 the body's not evil, but it can do evil deeds along the way. It can sin, basically. And I think we, we know that, okay? So we don't say the body is evil, but the deeds of the body can be evil, okay? That's important, okay? So we should stop saying the body is evil and stop caring about it, um, and just say we'll care about our spirit. No, the body is there and we'll live with it for eternity and we'll come back to this. So that's the body. Now the soul. The soul gives life to the body and as we know from the Bible, it's in the blood. Okay, So it's different to the spirit. Um, it's different. It's not, it's not the same as the spirit. And we share the soul with animals. So animals have body and soul. Humans have body, soul and spirit. Okay, there's, there's a difference there. And it's only the humans that have the spirit. So no animals or anything else have the spirit. It's only the, uh, it's only the, the humans, okay? If you want to think of it, think of it like if you have a car. The car is the body and the soul is like the, the petrol that makes the body go, that makes the car go. Now, if the car has no petrol, it will sit there and rot and die and it won't work after a while, Okay. So, so think of like in the car, the, the, the soul is that, that petrol that gives, it, gives the car its, its, its life really, okay? Um, when, the, when the soul leaves the body, the body dies straight away, okay? Because we said that the soul is in the blood. If it leaves the body, it's gone. And I know they say, obviously from a medical point of view, it, when the heart stops or the brain stops working, then, then you're dead. But what gives the blood... To the, um, to, the, to the heart and to, to the brain, it's, it's the soul because it's in the blood, okay? So when that leaves, then the heart, the brain will stop and the, and the body will stop and it will die, okay? And moving on to the, to the last component in the spirit. 
it gives a person life with God, okay? It's the channel between us and God. When God communicates, he communicates to our spirit because it's, it's that spirit that was made in his image and his likeness. It's that spirit that will enter the realm of the spiritual after, after we, we, we die, okay? It's one of them, okay? It's one of them, one of, the, one of the saints. It's one of the angels, okay? And God, we said that God created it in his image and it's eternal. The spirit never dies at all. It never did die, even after the original sin. The body dies, but not the spirit. The spirit lives forever, Okay? So, so a question is, can the human spirit sin? We know the body can sin. Can the human spirit sin? And can it sin, does it sin with or without the body? Okay. Let's look at a few examples. We know that the, the devil before he was a devil was uh, an angel in heaven, right? And he is a spirit. Did he sin in heaven? Yes, he did. Okay, what was his sin? Pride. He wanted to make his throne greater than God's throne. So that was the first sin he did. And did he do more sins? Of course. In the Garden of Eden, he was envious of Adam and Eve, and he lied to them about what would happen if they ate the fruit. Did God really tell you you're going to die? No, of course not. He just knows that, you know, you're going to be like him if, um, if you eat. Okay, so he lied. So the devil... There you go. We mentioned three sins that a spirit did, okay? But you might say that that's that's an angel or or that's something different. What about a human spirit? Yes, the human spirit can sin. Eve had a similar sin to what what, um, the devil did. When the devil told her you'll be like God, her spirit wanted to become like God, okay? Her spirit wants to become like God. And what did her spirit lead her body to do? To lust for the fruit that would make her like God. So, she, so the, 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 the sin of the spirit was to be like God and the body's sin was to lust over the fruit that she couldn't eat and she ate. Okay? And we see here that the spirit actually led the body to sin. Okay? And this was an example that His Holiness Pope Shenouda gave. Okay? Because it's something I didn't, wasn't sure of. Can the spirit sin? Yeah, no, I'm not sure. But when I read that example, it made a lot of sense, okay? So we've talked about the spirit, so the body, the soul, and the spirit. Now let's talk about their journey together on, in, in earth and in, in the afterlife. So we know, as we said, that the man is made up of body, soul, and spirit. Um, and while, there are, while the human is alive, he has the body, the soul, and the spirit. At the point of death, the soul separates from the body and dies, okay? And then the spirit goes into, um, goes into the realm of the spiritual. It leaves the body and goes into that spiritual realm. Now, the path it takes is something we don't know. And what I mean by the path it takes is there's many people who have accounts of what happens after death. For example... Some will say that the devil, and the, the way we know is they came back to life, for example, um, is the devils will come and try to snatch the, the, the spirit, okay? Um, then there's also been accounts of um, angels and saints coming down and, try, and, and, and like getting rid of these devils and taking the spirit up to paradise, okay? And we even we say this in the Gbiya prayer in the 11th hour. We, we say to St. Mary... Come to my rescue when my soul departs from my body. By soul, we mean spirit, okay? Come to my rescue when my soul departs from my body. We we ask her every day in the 11th hour prayer, please come to my rescue, okay? Okay? So, and and I've heard of people who um, came to the point of death or they did die and they were resuscitated and and they, uh, I'm assuming it's their spirit, came out of them and they could see themselves on the hospital bed from the air, okay? Um, so it, it does, it did, it did come out, okay? Um, now, what journey it takes, some people will say, 
it, it stays for a few days, then it goes, whatever. No one knows, okay? But all we know is it will end up in one of two places. It will end up in paradise or it will end up in Hades. There's nothing in between. And we'll come to the in between later because it doesn't exist, okay? Um, um, it either goes to heaven, to paradise, or to, 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 to Hades, okay? And that's it for a while, okay? So the body is dead in the grave, and then the spirit is in paradise or in hates, and then it pauses, okay? Which then we fast forward to the day of judgment or the second resurrection or what they call sometimes the general resurrection, which is the second coming, okay? And His Holiness, Pope Shenouda, talks to us about a story of two friends that reunite. These two friends lived together their whole life since the womb. They never separated their whole life. They feel each other. These two friends, of course, are the spirit and the body. If the spirit is down, the body shows that is, is upset because the spirit is upset. If the spirit is joyous, then you see that smile on the person's face. Okay, um, And they live together for the whole lifetime. Then finally, death separates them. And it separates them for hundreds and sometimes thousands of years. Hundreds or thousands of years, they, they're separated. And the spirit sees the body turn into ash, just a handful of ash, okay? Back to dust, back to bones, okay? Then on that day, the second coming, the spirit will look down and see the body resurrect and will see it in its glorious form and will see it um, without any blemish, without any faults, any sicknesses have gone. It's a perfect body and will join to it again. And these two friends will spend, will spend eternity together. Again, these two friends are the spirit and the body. Okay? Notice I said spirit and body because we said earlier the soul actually dies. According to our Coptic Orthodox faith, the soul dies and doesn't join them. Because it's in the it was in the blood. Okay. So the spirit can't go into the heaven without the body. It needs the body to enter heaven. And look what Saint Jerome says. He says, "Let us not despise the body that will reign in heaven with Christ." Again, let us not despise the body that will reign in heaven with Christ. That's why I pressed on earlier when we spoke about the body. You can't say it's evil because it will reign one day with Christ. Its deeds could be evil, yes. When it sins, it's evil, yes. Okay, But you won't, you won't, you won't say to the body you are evil. You will protect the body and this body will stay with you forever. But its form will change, which we'll speak about now. So we know now that the union of the body and the spirit will, on the day of the, of the resurrection or the, or the second coming will form something called a glorified body. Sometimes it's called a resurrected body. It will form that. And we said we're going to live for eternity in that body and that's the body we take when we go to heaven. Remember I said it's also different to the body or to the spirit that, we, that goes to paradise or Hades, right? It's, it's joined to the body now. So we need, to know, we need to know more about this body. What does the Bible say about this body? Okay, And who has this body? Do we have an example? What, what will it be like? There's only one person that received this body. Any guesses? In the Bible, who received the glorified body? Jesus. Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who received this, this, glorified, um, this glorified body. And it's the body that he appeared to his disciples in. They were able to touch him. They were able to feel him. St. Thomas put his finger on his wounds. Okay, He walked with them. He stayed with them. He even ate with them. Okay, A physical body. Okay, He spent 40 days with them to show them the body that they will receive and we will receive for eternity. That's why it's important that when Jesus came 
back from his resurrection. He just didn't stay in 40 days to say, hi, everybody, I'm back. I, I, I defeated everybody. I'm, I, I defeated death. I'm here. No, he was there to say, I'm going to spend 40 days with you in this body, and this is the body you will receive. Look at it. You can touch me. You can feel me. It's a physical body, but it was a transformed body, and then that's, that's the difference. Okay? Why was it so important? Because there's a lot of heresies and people out there that think that even though the body will resurrect, it, it won't really resurrect like a physical body. It'll be just really just a ghost or a spirit. Okay? Like you'll be able to see the ghost or the spirit there and you can see there's a head and there's arms and legs and everything. But when you come to touch it, like your, your hand will go through it, right? It'll be like a fog. Okay? Um, if, um, if you come to hug this spirit, you'll fall right through it. Okay? Um, and that's, that's not what the glorified body is. It's a, it's, it's a physical body, okay? Imagine if you had a loved one and they appeared to you and, and you lost this loved one, um, uh, for, like, and they died, and they appeared to you, and then you came to hug that person and you fell right through them because they were a ghost. And they stay with you but you can't touch them, they don't communicate with you, or maybe they do communicate with you, but they, they, you can't feel them. What's the point of that spirit being there? What's the point of that ghost being there? It, you might, it might as well not be there. It's not the same as when they, that person lived with you. That's why the glorified body will be different to this ghost. It won't be a ghost. It's physical. It's part of the joy of being in heaven. It's physical. You will feel it and you will experience it with your, with, with your body and your spirit in this glorified body, okay? You'll be able to touch, to see. You'll be able to recognise the people in front of you. You'll be able to recognise the people you knew on earth, okay? You'll be able to recognise St. Mary. You'll be able to recognise the, the fathers, the prophets. You obviously see our Lord Jesus Christ. You'll see the disciples. You'll be able to see David. You'll be able to see everybody, okay? You'll know who they are. Okay, this, this, they're not ghosts. They're not, they're not people that you will wave your hand and you, they'll be like a fog. Okay, this is really important. And that's why our Lord stayed 40 days on earth to prove that he was not a ghost. Okay, and that's why I've heard some people on the last scene of the Passion of Christ when he resurrects, though you do see his body and he stands up, the way he gets out of the... Um, um, the, the grave clothes is that it, it's like it's miraculous and there's just waves and there's nothing underneath. There was like a spirit went underneath it and people hate that. Uh, the people who really like, uh, you know, are hard on theology and, and doctrine of the church, they didn't like that because it, it was like his spirit kind of, uh, was, he was like a ghost, but that's not true. When Jesus resurrected, he resurrected in the body, right? He resurrected in the body. Okay, it wasn't, he wasn't a ghost and he stayed with them for 40 days and showed them um, what this body will be like. Um, okay, so now that we know that the body will transform and it will be a physical body joined to, this, to the spirit which will become this glorified body, what or how will it be different to the current bodies that we have? First, as you enter heaven, death will be no more. There is no more death. Okay? As you enter heaven in this glorified body, there is no more death. There is no more sadness or pain. It's only joy and happiness. There's no memories of pain or, um, or hurt. There'll be no hunger or thirst. But we'll be satisfied with our Lord Jesus Christ. Disease will be left at the door of heaven. There's no cancer. There's no arthritis. There's no social distancing. There's no coronavirus. There's nothing like that, okay? There's no disease. There's, there's no illness. There's no headaches. There's, if, if, if a baby uh, would die, okay, what would their body be like in heaven, okay? It won't, be, it won't have a helpless body. It won't need to be weaned. It won't be crawling in heaven because it doesn't have legs. God will give it a glorious body, okay, to enjoy heaven in its full, okay? What about the elderly? Will they have wrinkles in heaven? Will they have a walking stick? Will they get all their teeth back if they've lost it? 
Yes, of course. Okay? There's no wrinkles. There's no walking sticks. All teeth will be restored. They'll have this perfect body. Someone in one of the sermons I read, this is just the way he described it. It's not a biblical or church teaching. He said it would be like a 25-year-old. So anyone, it would be like 25-year-olds who are full of life, who have maybe no sicknesses, um, who, who are at the prime of their life. Um, it would be like that when they enter heaven. Okay, that's just the way to describe it. That's not a biblical or a church teaching. But what he was trying to say is they'll be full of life. They'll be at their best state. But even a 25-year-old could get sick and stuff. But when they're into heaven, there's no sickness. There's no disease. There's no aging. Okay? If, if you ever kind of forget everything that I've said and you, and you wonder what this glorified body will be like, just remember one thing. It's exactly like the body our Lord Jesus Christ took after the resurrection and spent 40 days with, with the disciples. Okay? It's exactly the same body. Okay? Exactly the same body. So if we go through some, some verses um, that I want to share with you um, and some quotes from the fathers, um, will this body be like the body Adam and Eve had before they sinned? And St. Augustine says no. This spiritual, this is what he says, this spiritual body will not, be, will, on, will not only be better than any body on earth in perfect health, but will surpass even the, that, that of Adam or Eve before their sin. So he's saying not only will your body be in a perfect state with no sickness or no disease and fully cured, if someone lost a leg, it'll be restored. It won't just be perfect. It'll be even better than that of Adam and Eve before they sinned. Because we have Christ resurrected. Christ is with us. We have, we are part of the victorious Lord. Okay? Um, think of the glorified body as a continuation of what you have now. The only difference is it's been transformed. It's like um, uh, the caterpillar that becomes a butterfly. Okay? It's just transformed. The body has transformed into something that's glorified, that's different. St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. That's important. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Okay? It transformed from a natural to a spiritual body, but it's still a body. Okay? And you might say, well, that's St. Paul. Is there any proof from the words of our Lord Jesus Christ that we will receive, there will be a resurrection and receive a body? So look what he says in John 5. He says, Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. And has given him authority, authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming, in which those who are in the grave will hear the voice, will hear his voice, and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the, rec- the resurrection of condemnation. A question I have here was the Lord repeating himself. The first part of this, he says. The dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and will live. And then a few verses later, he says, um, the hour is coming in which those who are in the grave will hear his voice and come forth. The answer is, no, they're not the same. The first is talking about those who are spiritually dead, those who have who are far from Christ or don't know Christ. And when the word of God touches their hearts, that they resurrect they resurrect or they become Christians, or even if they're Christians and they've been far from God, they'll return to God. God, our Lord Jesus Christ, des- describes this as someone who's, who's come back from the dead, okay? Spiritually come back from the dead, okay? That's the first part. The second part is different. It's a physical death. Those who hear his voice, everyone will hear his, sorry, I'll read it again. Um, those who are in the grave will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. 
everyone who is dead on that day will hear his voice. There's just a diff- one difference. Those who loved him will hear the voice of their beloved and those who um, um, turned away from him will not be happy to hear his voice. Those who didn't know him, those who rejected him, will not be happy to hear his voice because they will be resurrected into condemnation. But that's the promise of our Lord in John, that we will receive this spiritual body and we'll be called forth in the resurrection. Okay? So some questions that I had and to help, like, help us to understand this glorified body is um, what happens if the end of the world comes and people are still alive? Because we know that the end of the world will come and not everyone will die. Does anyone know what will happen to those who didn't die and the Lord comes? Anyone know what the Bible says? Mina, I know you know Mina. <laughs> Does anyone know? What will happen? I'll give you a clue. St. Paul gave us a few hints. Okay? Listen to what St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall, we shall not all sleep. By sleep he means die. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So what he's saying is anyone who doesn't die and the second coming comes upon them, they'll be changed to this glorious body, okay? They'll pretty much, I don't know if you want to say die on the spot or just change, but something will happen and they'll become a glorified body, okay? So that's biblical, okay? So everyone will will get this body whether they're dead or alive, okay, Um, at at the resurrection. Um, Another question I have is, you know, and a few months ago, a few months or several months ago, we, we celebrated Easter and we keep on singing the hymn of the resurrection. And one of the verses says, He is the first of the resurrected, or rather, um, one of the more correct translations is, He is the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Jesus, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. So my question is, was Jesus the first to resurrect? Was Jesus the first to resurrect? Do we have any evidence in the Bible that someone resurrected before Jesus? It's not a hard one. Yes. Yeah, we're going to come back to Enoch and Elijah, but we don't even have to go that far. Didn't Jesus raise the dead? As in the, the week before he died, didn't he raise Lazarus? From, how long was Lazarus dead? Four days. And he resurrected him. The... The daughter of Jarius as well, and and was it the son of the the son of the widow? I think that there were three. Yeah, yeah. And also in the in the Bible, in the Old Testament, Elijah even raised uh, uh, the son of the widow also from the dead. So resurrection actually wasn't a new thing, but they're different. How are they different? It's 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 uh, it's when you think about it, it's uh, it's, it's actually quite beautiful. Is in the people who resurrected, even the ones that our Lord Jesus Christ resurrected, they, they were alive. Their spirit and their soul returned to their body. If you like, you can say they were, were resuscitated. Not resuscitated as in CPR. Resuscitated as in they came back to life and their spirit and their soul came back to life, even if they were dead for a long time. But, and this is the big but, they died again. They weren't resurrected, glorified bodies. They were just resurrected as in they were given another chance to live. Even Lazarus, right? He was, they were given another chance to live, okay? But they died again. I, I believe Lazarus became bishop and he still died after, after a while, okay? None of them lived forever. They still died. So their resurrection was only a resurrection just to come back to life. But they still died, okay? But the Lord... When he resurrected, his body transformed into this glorious body that we we just spoke about, okay? It was different. He didn't resurrect and just came back to life and died again. He resurrected and and his body lives forever, right? 
like, we, like us, when we have our glorified body, we're going to live forever. That's different to say Lazarus or um, any of those who are raised in the Bible. That's why we say he's the first of the resurrected or the first fruit of those who have died because his resurrection is very different to the resurrections that happened in the Bible. Okay, And you touched upon um, Elijah and Enoch. They're, they're interesting okay? because uh, if, if you don't know Elijah and Enoch, they're two characters in the Bible that didn't die but were taken. Okay, But we know from the book of Revelations that they will come back. Okay, So what happened to them? Do you think they received a glorified body? Okay, And the answer to that is, is, is no. Right? They didn't receive a glorified body. They were just taken to a place and they're going to come back. Okay? And it's interesting what happened to Elijah in particular because Elijah was taken up by a chariot of fire. Okay? And why is that interesting? When, when, this, when, when a person dies, their spirit will join the realm of the spiritual, it knows where to go or it will be, at least be guided, but it will ascend to the heavens or ascend to paradise um, on its own, right? It, 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 it will ascend. But the body can't. No one can ascend into the spiritual realm or, or even fly or anything like that. The body can't. So when the Bible tells us that Elijah was taken to heaven, m- mind you, do you think he was taken to heaven, 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 as in the last heaven, as in where God is? No, that heaven is closed, right? That will only open on the second coming when our Lord uh, comes with us and presents us to the God the Father, okay? When the Bible says that Elijah was taken up to heaven, it, it likely means he was taken into a place in the atmosphere or the air where he was preserved to come back. He's somewhere in this universe. Him and Enoch are somewhere, but not in heaven, when, when, when the Bible says heaven, it just, it, just, it just means up there somewhere, okay? In the universe somewhere, okay? So the, the importance of when Elijah raised with the, the chariot of fire, why that's important, the Bible just doesn't put things there for, just for a story. It's important because it proves that he didn't die because if he died, his spirit can just go to, to the heavens or to the air by itself, okay? Because it knows where to go. But the fact that it was taken up by chariot means his body was still alive and he couldn't do it on his own. So God sent him some help. Okay? So that, that, that's actually quite interesting. Um, but they'll come back um, before the second coming and the beast will slay them and they will die because they're the two faithful witnesses. But they will resurrect after three and a half days. Okay? So that's Elijah and, uh, and Enoch. You can read about them in the Old Testament. Obviously, we don't know too much about them, but... Um, we um, think they will come back because the Bible talks about these two witnesses, yes. So, like, is this like, like a little bit of like a weird question, but like, does that mean like they've been alive for like 3,000 years? Like, yeah. Good question. Did the Lord put them to sleep or did they? <laughs> are they still breathing? I, I don't think anyone can answer that. I don't know. Yeah. No one knows what's happened, whether God's put them in some sort of sleep or maybe they're up there and they, they're breathing and they're like three, 4,000 years old um, and they're alive and they see everything, I, I don't know. But God is miraculous. He can do whatever whatever, whatever he wants, right? Um, um, it, it'll be interesting. And, and if we, um, when we go to heaven, we can ask them, right? <laughs> when we go to heaven, you'll recognise them, okay? What about this one? St. Mary, did she receive... The glorified body. I'll be honest, I wasn't sure. I, I rang a bull not to ask him. Did St. Mary receive the glorified body? You think so? Yeah. I, I thought initially maybe, maybe, maybe she was exempted. But uh, what Abuna said is it's a, it's, it's, it's a no because the Bible didn't say it and the church fathers didn't say it. So we don't have any evidence or proof that she received that glorified body. Okay. Um, so, so according to our faith, it's it's a no. She she would receive the glorified body during at the resurrection. Where her, the reason why I thought maybe she received the glorified body is because her body was taken up after death and received to the Lord. But of course, the Lord can do anything, and He can probably He will be preserving her body somewhere until the the the, the, the second coming. 
Okay? And the final question I have is purgatory. Do purgatory the place where if you've done a little bit of wrong and you're not really worthy of the kingdom of heaven, um, you can go to this purgatory place and you can um, repent there and then you can go to heaven. Does the church believe in that? No. That's a teaching of some of the Catholics. No Orthodox church believes that. Not even the Protestant church believes that. It's only the, the Roman Catholic church that, that believe that. Um, and it, it's a wrong teaching, unfortunately. Um, and, and, I mean, His Holiness Pope Schnurra writes a book, and I haven't read it, but I heard that there's a book about purgatory and, and why it's wrong. But I read a little bit of what one of our bishops says, and he says that um, the only thing that we needed was the atonement and the redemption, and that's the work of our Lord Jesus Christ, no one else, okay? And the, and the salvation is the, the work of the blood of Christ, okay? He actually went as far to say as it's an insult to say that there's a purgatory because it's like you're saying to our Lord Jesus Christ, yes, you came, you paid the price, you redeemed us, you saved us, but I have to do a little bit more to get to heaven and that's not within you, okay? So, no, we don't believe in purgatory. We don't believe that there's a, a place where you can, a medium place where you can kind of repent. Everything is done on earth. Um, so, so there's definitely no purgatory. So finally, to conclude, what about our own spiritual life? I mean, we spoke a lot about what we're going to become in the future um, when there's the resurrection. What can we do now, okay? Especially when, you know, you might, you might have been surprised to hear that your, your, your spirit can sin. So if your body sins and your spirit sins, then how are we going to go to heaven and what are we going to do, okay? The answer is we submit our spirits to the Holy Spirit and we submit our bodies to our spirit, which will be led by the Holy Spirit, okay? That's important. So our spirit submits to the Holy Spirit and to the works of the Holy Spirit, and our bodies submit to the spirit, our own human spirit, because it knows the path to Christ, because God guides it, okay? So through prayer, through Holy Communion, through continuous repentance and confession, through reading your Bible, through spiritual books, through spiritual exercises, through continuously becoming a better person through, you know, refraining from judging and gossiping and all that. We become better people, we become better Christians, we become closer to Christ and we're submitting our bodies to our spirit and the spirit is led by the Holy Spirit. And that's how we can kind of, at the moment, work towards um, that day when we get a glorified body. Um, and finally... Um, we, we easily forget, especially in this world, because it helps us to forget what happens when we die and what happens when we get the second coming comes and when we get this glorified body. Try not to forget about it because our life on earth is just a drop of water in the ocean, okay? Don't focus on the drop, but focus on the ocean, okay? Focus on how big that ocean is and focus on what you will be when you um, meet our Lord Jesus Christ in the second coming. Focus on the body you will receive and how you can work towards um, going to heaven and getting a glorified body for the resurrection rather than a, glor not a glorified body, but a, a body for rather condemnation and hates. Okay? And glory be to God forever. Amen. To, to Jesus or so? It's a good question. So, Because he's a full man, so he would have had the soul and the body, and the soul would have died at death. I, I, I assume, well, his spirit definitely came back to his body, and that's, and that's how he, he resurrected. His soul, I think, would have died. Okay, 
But that's different to humans then. Yeah. yeah. So Abuna is saying that the soul would have returned for, for Christ. Um, um, but for humans... Um, I think, uh, yeah, because the, 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 the divinity was in the body and, and the spirit. So the body wouldn't have corrupted. I, I, I don't know. I'll just go with... The yeah. Mm. That's why he was well, he was Um, also, um, uh, something I forgot to mention is um, the Bible interchanges between the soul and the spirit. So it, sometimes they're confused. And other churches, especially the Eastern Orthodox Church, they like to use the word soul. And we, we mean the same thing. The soul, when they say soul, we mean spirit. When we say spirit, then they mean soul and stuff. Um, so, um, so it doesn't matter what you use because um, the Bible itself uses both spirit and soul but we understand from context whether it means soul or, or spirit. Um, yeah, some churches do believe that the human soul does return and become the glorified body. I've heard that teaching, but not the Coptic church. Our Coptic church says it's only the spirit and the, and the body, and the soul just dies. Because the body, the soul is in the blood, and so I, it's kind of one with, with the body. So when it dies, the, bo- the body dies, basically. Okay. Is there any more questions? Okay. And glory be to God forever. Thank you so much, Abel. I'm sure you agree with me that uh, we probably haven't heard a very detailed talk on the glorified body before. And thanks so much, Abel. He went through and analyzed everything from the beginning and all the steps. And I think that answers a lot of our questions and clarifies a lot of confusion that we hear from different teachings. So we have to be careful when we think about that. And that actually gives us a lot of, um, of help because uh, one of the saints said, as Charbel mentioned at the beginning, is that body that toiled in your struggle, that body is the one that toiled in struggles through fasting and prayer, that body had to be rewarded as well in heaven. So uh, this is something very important for us. Whenever we labor, whenever we toll, we understand that we're going to be rewarded for that. So this is a beautiful one. Thank you again, Shabba. Um, uh, as you know, we, the next time we'll have a continual revival will be on Friday, Friday night and then Saturday night. And it's all through booking, please. So you need to book through Panagia to be able to attend uh, every single service. And um, as, as we've heard before, due to the regulations, there will be no social gatherings afterwards. So I can ask everyone to please uh, leave straight, and this door should be open here so people can exit through uh, that door. You can just start for prayer, please. In the name of the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the hope of the resurrection. The hope, Lord, that will help us in our daily struggles. Because, Lord, if there's no resurrection, then our life will have no meaning. And we'll have no hope, Lord. But you, Lord, gave us the hope of resurrection by raising from the dead yourself, Lord, so you can raise us up with you. When you, Lord, you are raised from the dead, we all, Lord, ask to erase us all from our sins, from our lives, Lord, and the things that we do that pulls us down. But we look forward, Lord, to the day when we are not pulled down anymore by all the materialistic things, Lord. But look forward to having that glorified body that will have nothing, Lord, that pulls us down now. All the desires, Lord, all the sicknesses, all the weaknesses, Lord. And we look forward, Lord, to that day when we're going to be seeing you, Lord, face to face and all the saints and the angels. Help us, Lord, to remind ourselves of this every day 
to help us in our struggles. Whenever we face tribulations, whenever the, the evil one, Lord, throws his arrows at us to try to discourage us and try to make us fall into despair, help us, Lord, to be renewed by remembering this beautiful hope and promise. We ask you, Lord, to bless this church, bless my fathers, bless those who stand before you, Lord, be with them, support them in everything they do. We ask you, Lord, through the prayers and intercessions of St. Mary, St. Mina, and all the saints and the angels, hear us, we pray, thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we give those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, our Lord, with the kingdom, power, glory forever. Amen. In the name of the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, and Amen. And now, of God the Father, grace is only well and Son, our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The gift and the of the Holy Spirit with you, go in peace, and the peace of the Lord be with you.